medcram.com. Well, welcome to another medcram.com and board vitals question. This one comes from the USMLE Step 3 question bank. And let's take a look here. So examine the following abstract and answer the question below. Let's take a look at this abstract from a study. Background. Beta blockers reduce mortality in patients with chronic heart failure or systolic dysfunction and who are on background treatment with diuretics and angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. This study seeks to determine whether or not carvedilol reduces the risk of mortality compared to standard treatment with diuretics and ACE inhibitors. So the method... In a multi-center, double-blind, and randomized parallel group trial, we assigned 1,511 patients with chronic heart failure to treatment with carvedilol. Target dose was 25 milligrams twice daily, plus ACE inhibitor and diuretic therapy, and 1,518 to standard treatment with combination of ACE inhibitor and diuretic. Patients were required to have chronic heart failure, that's New York Heart Association classes two through four, previous admission for a cardiovascular reason, and an ejection fraction of less than 0.35 or 35%. All patients also have been treated optimally with diuretics and angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors unless not tolerated. Primary endpoints were all-cause mortality and the composite endpoint of all-cause mortality or all-cause admission. Analysis was conducted by intention to treat. Let's go to the findings. Mean study duration was 58 months with a standard deviation of 6. Mean ejection fraction was 0.26 with a standard deviation of 0.07. And mean age was 62 years with a standard deviation of 11. All-cause mortality was 34%, and that was in 512 of the 1,511 for carvedilol, and 40%. And that's in the 600 of the 1,518 for the control group. The hazard ratio was 0.83 with a 95% confidence interval of 0.74 to 0.93, which was statistically significant at a p-value of 0.0017. Reduction of all-cause mortality was consistent across predefined subgroups. Incidence of side effects and drug withdrawals did not differ substantially between the two study groups. So after all of that, here's the question. Which of the following represents the number of patients needed to treat to save one life with addition of beta blockers? And here are the choices. So what this boils down to is how do you calculate the number needed to treat? So let's talk about that. So the number needed to treat is a very simple equation. But before we get to the equation, let's talk about what the number needed to treat actually means. So what you're looking for here is how many people do we need to give an intervention to before one of them actually has the desired output? How many people do we need to take away cigarettes from to prevent one lung cancer? Okay, that's kind of the issue that we're dealing with. And you can see here that the lower the number, the lower the number is, the more powerful that intervention is. The one I love to talk about because it's so obvious, is parachutes and people jumping out of planes. How many people jumping out of planes do we need to put a parachute on to save one life? Of course, I mean, a parachute is extremely effective. You could make the argument that there are some people that have survived jumping out of a plane without a parachute, and of course, there's certainly some people that have jumped out of planes with parachutes that have not, but by far and large, if you give somebody a parachute who's going to jump out of a plane It's extremely effective, and the number needed to treat is going to be very, very close to one. Okay, so that one is kind of the lowest number that you could possibly get. So how do we actually calculate it? This is the equation for it, and this is the one that I want you to remember. It's simply the number needed to treat is the number one divided by the absolute risk reduction. And here's the key word, absolute. So in other words, if something goes from, let's say, a 40% rate of something bad happening to a 20% rate of something bad happening, okay, 40 going to 20, what's the absolute risk reduction? The absolute risk reduction is 40 minus 20. The absolute risk reduction would be 20%, or in this case, it would be, we'd put it as a 0.2, right, because 20% is 0.2. What we're not talking about here is saying, look, there was a 50% reduction in mortality, So we're not looking for that number 50, all right? Even though there is a 50% reduction, that's the relative risk reduction. 
That's not what we're looking for. We're actually looking for the absolute value of the difference between these two groups. And so in this case, 40 going to 20, the absolute risk reduction is 20, okay? So that's an example. Let's actually go in to the question stem and get the numbers out of there so we know what we're doing. So what I've done here is I've highlighted in red the two numbers that we need. Everything else in this question stem, everything is superfluous. We don't need any of it. I mean, the background, the methods, and you should know that when you get down to the bottom and they're talking here about the number of patients needed to treat. You know that you're looking at the risk with an intervention and the risk without an intervention. And so let's look at that. The all-cause mortality, so this is the outcome, was 34% when you had carvedilol, and it was 40% when you didn't have carvedilol. So we went from 40% down to 34%. And so the way we would write that in the denominator is 0 0.40 minus 0.34. And as you can see here, this is the one that it matches. That is the correct way of doing the denominator. And of course, the one over, as we talked about with the equation with the number needed to treat. So why are these other ones wrong? Well, this one's got it backwards. 0.34 minus 0 0.40, what's that going to give you? That's going to give you a, the same absolute number in terms of the number needed to treat, but it's going to be a minus number, right? And so we don't treat minus people. Here, this looks like it's close, but again, they forgot to convert percent into decimal points. So 40% is actually 0 0.40. Here, it's the same issue, except it's just backwards again. You're going to get a negative number. And here, this number here fits in a red herring, which is the hazard ratio. Okay, so let's just do it for the fun of it, and let's see what it shows in terms of a number. So again, it's going to be 1 over the absolute risk reduction. So in this case, it's going to be 1 divided by, as we said, 0 0.40 minus 0.34, which is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.06, which is equal to... 16.67. Now, depends on how you want to report this. Typically, if you're going to report a number needed to treat, the question is, how many patients do you have to treat? And we don't treat fractions of patients. So in this case, we would probably round up. Some people might say, the purists might say, if that there's any leftover, you've got to round up because you have to treat a whole patient. So you've got to treat 17 patients, in this case, to save one life. Let's do our favorite example here, or at least my favorite example, of 1 over the parachute test, or the vertical challenge, as it's said. What's the mortality rate if somebody jumps out of a plane without a parachute? Let's just say, for argument purposes, it's 100%. And what are the chances of someone surviving if they jump out of a parachute and they're well-trained, and they know how to pull a ripcord and all that kind of stuff? They know how to actually use the intervention. Well, it's pretty close to zero, right? So what would be the number needed to treat? Well, 1 minus 0 is 1, and 1 over 1 is 1. So that shows that this is a very, very effective treatment for the vertical challenge. And that is number needed to treat. I would definitely know this. It always pops up on tests. Thanks for joining us.